Hello guys, this is Tripped Over. Today, you can call me fucking lover. XXX. X. 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 Today we're going to be talking about adventure, action, and treasure. But most importantly, we're going to be talking about Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. And what's leading up to it throughout the series. Now, Little is known in the first two games about who actually Nathan Drake is, about his childhood, his life before, but it's the third game that actually gives you the in-depth detail, so that's where we'll start. In the third game, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, the story is told that when Nathan was five, his mother committed suicide, and his father had given up to the St. Francis Boys' home, where he was raised by nuns and taught the Latin that he knows so fluently. And as he grew up, Nathan learned quite a bit about Francis Drake. When he was 15, this is where the story takes over, and you're put into the shoes of Nathan Drake and Cartagena, Colombia, where the Maritime Museum was holding a Francis Drake exhibit. Not only is this where Nathan Drake gets a hold of the infamous ring that he holds, with Francis is saying, Greatness from small beginnings, a model that Nathan follows devoutly, but also where he met his partner in crime and father figure, Victor Sullivan. So Nathan reclaims the ring, and this is where he encounters Catherine Marlowe and Victor Sullivan. Marlowe instantly wants Nathan dead. She has her men chase him down, and Nathan is nearly killed until Victor Sullivan saves him, and thus raises him. But, that story will be saved for later, when we get past the first two games. Now, the Uncharted franchise truly starts at Uncharted, Drake's fortune. The story begins with Nate and journalist Elena Fisher recovering the coffin of Francis Drake off the ocean floor. Now what is in this coffin? The answer? The coffin is completely empty. This is where Lena and Nate are attacked by pirates, only to be saved by Mr. Victor Sullivan and his seaplane, the Wild Hog. The story proceeds along, and Victor and Nate leave Elena behind, because this is their journey, and theirs alone. So, they travel off to the Amazon, where they find the remains of an old U-boat, past the remains of an old South American civilization, and in this, they find the legend of a gold statue named El Dorado. As Nathan leaves the U-boat, Victor is shot, which forces Nathan to leave Victor behind, who is then taken captive by Gabriel Roman, another treasure hunter seeking wealth. So Nathan gets the help of Elena Fisher, who mysteriously appears along, for she had been tracking Nathan and Victor. The two of them get in Victor's plane and fly off to the island that Francis Drake had marked. And when they get there, they're attacked by Gabriel once again, until the two of them come across a long abandoned port city. Nathan goes through the blogs and everything. It's very suspicious that the city was just abandoned immediately. No remains, nothing. Just empty. So the two of them go deeper into the city, and as they enter a monastery, they find who else than Victor Sullivan, who survived thanks to Francis Drake's journal blocking the bullet. So, the trio of them go down in the catacombs, revealing more and more clues to the treasure. The trio find the treasure vault, but before they do, Eddie appears running from his life from what are called the Descendants, which are mutated humans possessed by incredible speed and strength. Eddie is slain by the creatures, and Nate and Elaine escape, finding themselves in a German submarine base. Nate goes throughout the base, restoring power to it, and this is when the Descendants begin creeping further and further in. And this is when Nathan discovers that the Germans had found the statue of El Dorado during World War I, but, like the Spaniards before them, were mutated by the statue. And this is where Nathan finds Sir Francis Drake's body. Nate realizes that he died in the island, not having found the treasure. Nate leaves Francis' ring with his corpse and tells Elena that it's time to leave the island. Sir Francis, knowing the statue's power, is actually trying to keep it off the island before he, too, was killed by the descendant. So, Nate attempts to return to Elena, only to find out that she has been captured by Navarro and Roman. Now, Navarro tells Roman to open the statue of El Dorado, and when he does, he inhales an airborne virus that was carried by the rotting corpse and mutates into one of the descendants. So, Navarro shoots the mutated Roman, feels that this had been his plan the whole time to steal the statue. So, he flies off in a helicopter, and the mercenaries are attacked by the descendants. Nathan jumps onto the net that was holding El Dorado. The helicopter crashes on a tanker ship. Nate and Navarro fight. Navarro is knocked unconscious, 
and Nate pulls an injured Elena from the helicopter. And this is when Nate pushes the helicopter off the tanker, pulling not only down the helicopter, but Navarro and the statue. Nate and Elena kiss, and Victor Sullivan arrive in a small speedboat, carrying a box of treasure, and everything seems happy. As Elena reminds Nate that because she lost her camera, he still owes her a story, and Nate assures her that he is good for it. Next begins Uncharted 2, Among Thieves. The story begins where Nathan is offered a job by Harry Flamer and Chloe Fraser to steal an oil lamp owned by Marco Polo in the Istanbul Palace Museum. Nathan accepts the job, and both him and Flynn break in the museum. Nathan reveals that the oil lamp actually contained a map, and this is when Flynn betrays him. Drake is arrested in prison for three months before Victor Sullivan comes to the aid, with good wishes from Chloe. So, Nathan and Sully fly off to get even with Flynn, and to get more information on the treasure. They find out the man behind the scheme is Lazarovich, a war criminal who slayed several people. It is then revealed to Nathan after invading Lazarovich's camp. They find out the next clue points to a temple in Nepal. They are then ambushed by Flynn, and afterwards they nearly escape. Victor decides that this is too much for him, and that he's leaving it to Nathan and Chloe to head to Nepal. So, in Nepal, Nathan and Chloe find out that Lazarovich has been waging urban warfare to find out where the temple is. And who does Nathan find in Nepal? None other than Elena Fisher. It's obvious that the two of them had had very bad past between the first game and the second, but nonetheless they work together. And this is where Chloe is taken captive. Nathan boards a train to find Chloe. And this is where upon confronting Chloe and Flynn, Nathan is shot. The train crashes, nearly killing him. Nathan trudges off in the snow, and passes out. He then wakes up in a Taban village, where he is reunited with Elena, and learns of a German man by the name of Carl Schaefer. Schaefer tells Nathan all that he's known. Schaefer tells Nathan to go investigate a certain region, where him and his men had gone looking for the same treasure that Nathan is. The treasure of Shangri-La. So... Nathan travels into the depths with a man by the name of Tenzin, finds the remains of the German soldiers, where he encounters Yeti-like creatures, and him and Tenzin nearly escape their life. The village is attacked by Lazarovich's convoy, and Nathan follows after him in suit. This leads them to a Tibetan monastery, which thus leads to the broken paradise, containing the Chintamati Sone, which is in fact the purified blue resin of the Tree of Life. Upon reaching the center of the broken paradise, Lazarevich inhales the blue resin and becomes near immortal, healing his scars and rendering him nearly indestructible. It is only by detonating pockets of explosive resin in the tree that Nathan is able to defeat Lazarevich, leaving him to be killed by the guardians, the tainted people of the broken paradise. Nathan escapes with Chloe and Elena. After reaching the village once again, Chloe asks Nathan if he loves Elena, which he confesses to. Then, Sully arrives with recovering Elena, who was shot in the chest. Both Elena and Nathan pay their respects at Schaefer's grave before embracing, enjoying their little piece of paradise. Now, this is where Uncharted 3, Drake's deception, begins. Nate and Victor Sullivan meet up a man by the name of Talbot to sell Francis Drake's ring. Only, the whole thing was a setup to call out Marlowe, the man by the name of Charlie Cutter, who is working for Tobolt, has actually been working with Nathan and Sully. So that way, Nathan could acquire what he lost when he was a child, which was Francis Drake's cipher disc. After faking their death, Nathan, Sully, Cutter, and Chloe follow Marlowe. So Nathan, Sully, and Cutter go into the depths of underground tunnels. They find a secret library. They find the journals of T.E. Lawrence, the cipher disc, and a map. Nathan learns that Sir Francis Drake was on a hidden mission to find some sort of secret treasure. Nathan and Sully travel to France from the investigate a house of a previous crusader. They investigate the entire manor and acquire an amulet. Only half of an amulet, though. After escaping from the manor, Sully and Nathan realize that they have to get to Syria, where both Cutter and Chloe were at, acquiring one half of the amulet. So they go to Syria, where the four of them are reunited. This is where Cutter's leg is badly injured after escaping a fire that Marlowe had set up. While well, they have acquired the whole amulet, Cutter and Chloe call it quits for the rest of the adventure. And Nate and Sully travel to Yemen, where they meet up with Elena Fisher. Elena and Nathan had become estranged throughout the year because of Nathan's risk for adventure 
in his fear of commitment. Although, Elena does carry with her a ring, the very same ring which Nathan had given to her in marriage. So they travel throughout the city of Yemen with Elena's help. Nathan encounters Talbot and gets back the Journal of Lawrence, and afterwards they escape into an underground tunnel system, finding out that the star constellations could pinpoint the Atlantis of the Sands. This is where Talbot drugs Nathan and takes him to the side and has him tell him the location of the city and all the information they need. Marlowe then takes Nathan, threatens him with Elena, and then has him taken off by a pirate by the name of Ramses. Nathan escapes flawlessly throughout the ship graveyard that Ramses has, and escapes onto Ramsey's main ship, the Sea Ward. And of course, wherever Nathan goes, trouble follows. With the help of a storm and a few grenades, the ship sinks. Nathan then wakes up on the shores of Yemen, where he makes his way up to Elena's apartment, revealing that she has a plan to get back Sully from Marlow. So the next morning, Nathan and Elena board a cargo ship, but before Elena can get on, Nathan tells her that this is his job. Trouble follows, with the help of some more grenades, in a rocket launcher, the plane crashes, and Nathan survives with the help of a box with a parachute strapped to it. Nathan treks through the desert for days, suffering hallucinations and dehydration, where he arrives to a ghost town where he finds Marlowe's men, only to be saved by the Badaloon tribe. Salem, the sheik of the tribe, tells Nathan that this, the Atlantis of the sand contains a great evil, which pushes Nathan to stop Marlowe even more. Upon rescuing Sully from the convoy, they reach the Atlantis of the Sands. Traveling throughout the city, they realize that the water itself is contaminated, and the water caused hallucinations of a very large vessel of brass. They reach the winch where the vessel is being pulled out. Nathan shoots it, and the city begins to crumble. This is where Nathan, Marlowe, Tobolt, and Sully encounter one another once again, where Marlowe is falling in the quicksand. Nathan attempts to help her. Not only does Marlowe dies, but Nathan loses his ring from small beginnings to greatness. Escaping the city, this is where Nathan encounters Tobolt one last time. This is where they fight, only for Nathan to shoot Tobolt into the sands. After escaping the city, Nathan and Sully arrive at an airport, preparing to leave Yemen. And Sully tells Nathan that he's like a son to him. Tells him that you don't get to choose how we start in this life. Real greatness is what you do with the hand you're dealt. Giving him his wedding ring, and tells Nathan that he's been carrying it around for too long. Elena arrives at the airport and apologizes for Nathan losing for Francis' ring. Then, Nathan looks at her and says that he found another one, which is his wedding ring. The two leave Yemen together, with Solomon, hand in hand. Sully leads them to the new plane, modeled after the wild hog, which Nathan and Elena destroyed during the events of Drank Fortune. Now, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Little is known about this game, except that it takes place several years after his last adventure. Nathan lives a quiet life with Elena. He's taken a job as a clerk in a shipping office. And the story begins where one late night, a man comes in his office. And this man is Sam Drake, Nathan's brother. And Sam reveals that he has a lead on a pirate colony by the name of Libertaria. So Nathan is once again thrust back into the world of thieves, where he requests Sully's help. And they set out one last time, where Nathan pushes his physical limits and learns what he's willing to sacrifice to save his friends and his family. Good night.